What do crypto mining cars, China banning Bitcoin, and carbon tax all have in common? Well, surprisingly, it's one of the most bullish stories I've heard in crypto in a very long time. In this video, we go into what we think might have been happening in the recent Bitcoin price dump and why those events might just be setting us up for a perfect bull run. First, we're gonna touch on China, but make sure you watch until the very end because you will not believe what we've uncovered. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe for more deep dives exactly like this. China has been all over the news lately with the talk of its electric cars and of course about banning Bitcoin for the millionth time. More on electric cars and Bitcoin in a bit. My name is Kyle Chasse and I've been in crypto for nearly 10 years. On this channel, we go to deep dives about the best projects in crypto and tell you what you need to know in the world of blockchain. The time for the resurfacing of this China bans Bitcoin news seems to always come out during the middle of a bull run. If you look back to September 2017, you can see that we were in a full on bull run and Bitcoin was headed for the moon. But then of course, China announced that they were gonna ban ICOs. The news caused a 20% drop in Bitcoin price in a matter of days. But by the time October rolled around, the FUD left the market and the focus switched back to the fundamentals. At this point, the FOMO kicked in and we saw Bitcoin hit a three month exponential growth trend. This time around, we hear news that China again bans Bitcoin and that there could also be a full ban on leverage trading. While this news might scare some hodlers into short term panic selling, this absolutely means nothing for the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Nothing has changed. It is still going to be the number one currency in the world, in my opinion. Back in 2013, when we saw China first ban Bitcoin, the price dropped by 50% and we entered into a bear market. As you know, the market just crashed over 50% and a lot of people are screaming that we're back into a bear market again all over just like 2013. But one major difference to the crash of 2013 is what happened when Bitcoin bottomed out. In 2013, the price went from 1165 to 560. The market completely lost confidence and stayed at a multi-year low. This year, however, when we had the dip to 30,000, we had very strong buy demand from billionaire investors and corporations. We can see it in the charts. Currently, 76% of Bitcoin supply is locked away. At the same time, the overall demand for Bitcoin keeps increasing as more new wallets are created every single day than actual people exiting the market. This is extremely bullish for Bitcoin and crypto. But what about electric cars? And did Elon Musk profit from temporarily crashing the price of Bitcoin? Well, it looks like he did, but not in the way that you might think. Listen, there is huge incentive for market manipulation in a space that is only recently and barely regulated. And billions of dollars are at stake. We have a mix of large enterprises and institutions that are looking to enter into Bitcoin at the best possible price. And we have a lot of people that are holding huge bags that are looking to take profits. Just listen to Raoul Powell, a seasoned investor who actually believes the Central European Bank might have been the instigator of the recent FUD. I think the ECB, the European Central Bank, spread the ESG FUD. Raul actually believes that the ECB would love to slow down the adoption of Bitcoin while they are busy creating their own central bank digital currency. Look, I've been saying this for a very long time. I'm always talking about how there's going to be a war where the people who control all the money in the world start pushing back severely against a decentralized permissionless currency like Bitcoin. And that is likely, very likely, what is happening right now. The central banks, the feds, they're all creating central bank digital currencies right now all over the world. And as I've mentioned before, this is an extremely dystopian future that you're looking at. If they can slow down the adoption of Bitcoin, they could first get these people who haven't adopted the better currency option yet to be using the central bank digital currency so they can absolutely control the finances of everybody. That is a huge incentive for them to create Bitcoin green energy FUD. So how are they able to make the FUD actually stick? Large investors and entities in Europe have to stick and comply by strict environmental standards or they have to follow the environmental, social, governance mandate to where these big entities and investors could no longer afford to invest in Bitcoin for fear of the reputation or even breaking the environmental mandate that is imposed on them. Here's where things go back to Elon as a businessman. I'm not sure if you know this or not. Did you know that Tesla actually makes more money in carbon tax credits than it does in selling Teslas? In the past, Tesla has been selling emissions credits to other automotive makers. However, with many other car companies pushing out electric vehicles, Tesla is now switching to the US renewable fuel credit market to make the majority of its income. To have the best chance of entry into this market, Elon had no choice but to stop accepting Bitcoin for Teslas. This had nothing to do with Elon's personal opinion of Bitcoin. We even know that Elon loves crypto and I'm sure that in the future he will be a massive advocate as he already has been for Dogecoin, but we already know that he thinks fiat and the SEC are crap. So this had everything 
anything to do with Tesla staying profitable and gaining entry into the US renewable fuel credit market. So after the cryptocurrency markets were in a state of greed from January until early May, we actually started to see some fear come into the markets. It began with the ECB Green Energy FUD in early May and followed by the Elon tweet. During this period, we saw Bitcoin go from 60,000 to 54,000. Then the Elon tweet appeared to cause a cascade from 54K to 42K. In that 42K range, there wasn't a lot of support. Then we heard the plan on Reddit, where the Chinese entity wanted to long squeeze one single entity. That coordinated play saw massive coordinated dumping by Bitcoin whales crashing the price down to 30K. This brings us all the way back to the beginning of the video. As you can see, there has been a lot of FUD since the beginning of May, but now here comes the good news. In the past, at the beginning of bear markets, we saw large amounts of Bitcoin liquidity sitting on exchanges and retail continuing to sell. This is the first time we've seen major financial institutions buying up the dip. There is enough confidence in the market that large amounts of Bitcoin are being taken off exchanges and putting into cold wallets. For large entities to do this, they would need to believe that we are near the bottom and cash in on that 50% discount they just got. Even more bullish news comes from Kathy Wood of ARK Invest. She brought up another great opportunity that could come out of this correction. I think are much more comfortable with it now that we've had several years to digest what exactly it is. At this point in Bitcoin maturity, we are seeing countries like Canada creating Bitcoin ETFs and even heard proposals for Ethereum ETFs. And for the first time, Americans finally have an SEC chairman who we believe is somewhat crypto friendly. That is Gary Gensler. It is very hard for an SEC to approve a very volatile asset like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And with Bitcoin at 60,000 plus and extreme volatility and price discovery, it would have been extremely difficult difficult for a Bitcoin ETF to be passed. But Kathy pointed out that Bitcoin has had a 50% correction and seems to have bottomed out and stabilized. To her, this seems like a much more reasonable market for Gary to approve an ETF. And exactly, exactly as I predicted in a video before that, Elon Musk and Michael Saylor have teamed up to create a Bitcoin mining council. The main goal for this council is to find the most energy efficient and green way to mine Bitcoin. As we all know, Elon Musk, not only is he heavily involved in solar energy, he is also leading innovation and battery energy retention. As you know by now, when Elon gets involved and invests in something, he goes huge and revolutionizes industries. I don't think it'll be long before we start hearing news of what Elon and Michael have dreamed up about their plans for making Bitcoin mining more green and energy efficient. And who knows, he may even integrate Bitcoin mining into his cars or buildings using his solar energy systems. I think that once we get out of this fear phase, there is a lot of exciting and positive news ahead for us that will continue in the next phase of this bull market. I think it's going to be a wild ride. What do you think? of this narrative. Do you think that we're about to start another leg of this bull market like in 2017? Or do you think it's more like 2013 and we're entering into a bear market? I've got some good news. Since you hung out and stayed through this video, and I hope you learned a lot from it because I sure did making this video, I got some great news for you. You're entered into the giveaway. I'm going to go through the comments in this video. Please let me know what you want to see. What do you think I should make a video on? What does the market really need right now? I will go through and pick the best answer and that winner will get a guaranteed allocation into one of our upcoming public sales on a Ignition. When you're done, make sure you can go watch my last video because there was another giveaway announcement in that video too. I think it's <laughs> gonna be wild. Wild. Everybody over rich.